Buongiorno and welcome to uh, Jack's Vein Studio Live number 24. We are live three times uh, a week on Twitch, working on a sailing simulator. We're still in a prototype stage, uh, hopefully for not too long. Um, what I'm going to do today is probably something I really have no idea what to expect because my plan is to work on something that is uh, completely new for me and is um, a neural network uh, based artificial intelligence, which is, yeah, it's very exciting, but uh, totally new. Um, we start really not from much because what I have right now is something that is not based on neural networks. So what I did is I, I, I am writing code um, in the main game to um, support multiple AI boats. So these boats that, you know, the white boat that we see right now, they are um, AI controlled. Um, and my boat is there and it's still not controlled by anybody. Uh, I did by adding uh, these boats yesterday. Um, all right, so now we should see them uh, accelerating and uh, falling. Yeah, interestingly, uh, you can see that there is a difference of speed between them, although they have exactly the same AI. And this is inter an interesting um, phenomenon to to analyze, it could be something that uh, relates to probably the waves that they find, hopefully, uh, similar result. In this case, it looks like the center boat might be the faster. No, again, the, yeah, again, the, the third board, for some reason, seems to be stuck there. So that's something interesting to uh, to look at, try to understand what it is that's pretty reproducible. Now, let me see if I change the starting positions. So what happens if I spread them more? Like, you know, what if I... Okay, what if I mix, mix the position? So what if I swap the first and the third boat. Right, so basically the, the boat that now was faster will start in the position of the boat that, that was slower and that should clear if, uh, if, if it's something that is position-based or something that looks like they are behaving exactly the same. Yeah, it looks like it's position based. It's position based. So the boat that is starting there for some reason has probably some more, um, how you say, um, favorable uh, waves. Okay, let me talk about what the plan is for this AI. So the idea is, Let's start with something super simple. Like for example, let's have the neural network control the foils. Um, the entire point is we need to, in order to evolve the neural network, we need to be able to calculate the fitness value. So the fitness value is, okay, how good, how good the result of this particular um, AI uh, genome was, right? And my idea is like, okay, let me run the simulation for like one minute and let's see how far the boat goes, make it in the direction that I, that I want the boat to go. And that's going to be the fitness, right? So the, the fact that waves can influence this, it's something to take into account um, uh, for this. It, it, it could screw up a little bit the result. This is uh, the situation. One thing that is interesting that I found by adding more boats, 
you might have noticed that I am now launching the release version. And the reason is that with already with four boats, only four boats, I'm already at 40% of my physics uh, budget. Um, of course, I'm still single threaded. Um, so, but my computer is quite a powerful computer. So being already at 40% with only four boats on one physics thread is not great. <laughs> um, so I did a little bit of investigation and there are some good news and some bad news. The, the good news is that the entire thing, unsurprisingly, it's limited to one function if i can find it it takes to do the physics so things will look a little bit like this right so this is how usually games that are based on tasks work right and physics just becomes another task that they do now what is the problem here the problem here is that if you notice how do I do a line? Uh, bang. If you notice, right, so this is the moment when we see the, the result on the screen, right? At the end of this frame. It's not really that, it's not really that good. It's usually way more in the future with modern video cards. But let's say that this is the moment that we see things. So when we are here what we are actually seeing is this guy right because we have to start rendering the frame the the information that we have is this is the the most recent information that we have right so this is this distance is the lag between our physics Thing. What is the advantage of, of, of this? What is the lag on, on this uh, system is, is, for example, no, no, that's not the right one to show it, but is, for example, uh, what we see here is this one, right? So we are seeing the very last physics that happened right before um, our frame started. So tiny, tiny lag. And that means that, for example, in a racing game, that means that when you move your steering wheel, provided that your steering wheel is right on the physics, which is the case for, for the game I did, um, when you move the steering wheel, this, the, the, the length of the frame is pretty much, the length of the frame plus minus three milliseconds um, in Assetto Corsa is your typical lag that you have. Uh, if you go with a task-based, uh, you have a much bigger lag, right? Way, way bigger than that. Uh, we have something that is incredibly non-exciting, which is uh, this uh, first attempt of a neural network system called NEAT, which stands for something that I don't remember. but sounds super smart is there you go oh, look at this neuro new i can't say this shit new neural evolution of augmenting topologies wow that's that sounds so smart All right so that's the one i'm going for um what it does right now is really something not not exciting at all so is is using this system with a population of 20 genomes that you can imagine like, you know, different brains or individuals, how you want to say, evolving for 50 generation, trying to figure out what is the best way to get from the input number 0 0.5 and 1 to a result of 2.01. And uh, the results are all right. As you can see, this is the best result that we get after 50 generation. We get 2.0105, so pretty close. The P 
problem is that it does it with a, with a genome that is, with a neural network that is way more complicated than it should be because the ideal solution should be really um, um, yeah, to, to, well, it could be like, just ignore one of these two numbers and just do a node and multiply by 2.01 and you're done. Uh, that should be the ideal solution. Why thread run? Um, so one thing that I can do is this guy. So instead of running the physics at five milliseconds, I can just go as fast as I can. So forget about real time and just go as fast as you can, right? It still has a concept of what is the time, but you see that things are happening faster now. Not super fast, we're, we're about two times, a little bit more than two times, um, zero simulazioni. <laughs> Thank you for the follow. Right, so two times, a little bit more than two times faster than real time. Right, that's what is happening right here. Because the point, okay, let me make this point about neural network and why I am not convinced that they are a good solution for what I'm trying to do. The, the thing that I don't know about a neural network is how easy it is to tweak the result. The problem with them is that they are pretty much a black box. Right, the, the pretty much that the, their brain will evolve a solution that is not something that you can go inside and, and look how it works. Right, well, you could, but it depends how complicated the problem is. The, the more complex the problem you have, the more complex the solution is going to be. So the, the network of neurons and connection is gonna be more and more complex, right? So you, you look at that solution, and, there is no way to go there and tweak it. So for example, my question is, okay, let's say that I can evolve a, an amazing AI that, that is an amazingly fast in, in, in sailing the boat, right? Okay, how, at that point, how I can make it like, okay, but I don't want it that fast because it's too fast. I want it like 80% level. Um, so players can find the, 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 right, the, the right challenge, right? H how does that work? Is it even possible? Should I have like, should I evolve, should I have like different brains? So, you know, you, you just choose a completely different, different, uh, different brains. That's, that's what I don't like. That's what I, it's totally fascinating that they can, well, hopefully they can come up with solutions that you can't really code directly. On the other side, the, the, you look, my impression is that you completely lose control on, on what they're doing. And, and your only hope, like for example, if the eyes start to do something totally stupid, there is nothing you can do, literally nothing. If you are in a race and the AI is doing something in, in a particular situation, is doing something completely stupid, there is nothing you can do. The only thing you can do is to start the, 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 the system to evolve the AI and let it run for whatever, uh, how many hours you want it to run and hope you know, in, with possibly trying to replicate that solution so the AI can sort of evolve a solution to that situation, right? And hope for the best. That's all you can do. There is no direct intervention from the programmer that goes there and code stuff to, to make it happen. So that's the thing that a little bit scares me about this. So yeah, but anyway, I, I, I thought, okay, let, let, let me try this for a couple of weeks and see where it goes, because otherwise I, my, my knowledge remain completely on the theoretical side uh, and not practical side. This neat approach um, is evolving based on a genetic algorithms, 
but is not just evolving the weights, it's also evolving the topology, the structure of the network. So it's able to add and remove uh, connections, neurons, and so on. So it starts from the simplest network possible, which is, okay, I have three inputs and one output, right? It con so, so three inputs, one output is like four nodes. I do the connection between the inputs and the outputs, and that's it. It starts with that one, and it tries to mutate that, finding a solution. From what they say, it converged to a solution faster than traditional, than other methods. There are actually very, very cool videos on YouTube that you can check. Uh, what I need is a system to restart the simulation. So to, to reset the simulation. So if I, if I run the simulation right now, because this is what I'm going to do, right? So these guys are gonna run for one minute, right? So they run for one minute. Then the, the idea is that at the end of that, I will gather the results for the fitness, evolve new brain, and I need to bring this guy back to the original position and start again, and start calculating. So I need this functionality to reset the, the, the book. All right, so um, let's see how this thing works. So F9 should reset, boom, all right. Uh, not really. <laughs> what happened? They all went in the same place? What the hell happened? Are they? all gone in the same place we lost two boats where did they go <laughs> oh my god that's super weird where are we racing in the bermuda triangle are there three boats in here maybe okay let me try now uh, let me okay boom yeah there you go so is is the proof is the proof so we got some nuns in here so now i am only resetting the angular velocity Okay. <laughs> that that's that's more what I was expecting to see. I, you can see that they maintain a little bit. If I if I wait here, it should be easier to see that they maintain a speed in that direction as they're falling. Boom. Yeah. Okay. Ah, okay, I know I know what's going on. I think is the foil that is up that of course is ventilating, which is and it's not ventilating at the beginning. Okay, okay, okay. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. So when I do teleport, I got it. So teleport. Well, C L C D can only have one. <laughs> one meaning isn't it the only comment that can go there is return cl and cd <laughs> exactly what it says on the on the team right uh boom and it works so i think that okay i think we got it the fact that their their final speed is so different is not good i mean this is not going to be good this is this is going to screw up our entire let me see if i what happen if i put the c down so if i put the c down i expect them to accelerate at a much more comparable speed yeah 
So it's totally the waves. Which is a problem because of course we want to, the AI to train with the waves. Oh. We'll have a totally random, super simple brain, which I suppose will just make stupid stuff. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> you can see the foil. <laughs> the foil is going at stupid values there. Okay, so the first thing I have to do is, is adding a clamp to that. I don't think the other boats are doing much better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, they all... Right. And a lot of stuff with cars. To be honest, I mean, they're all examples that can never work for a racing simulation. I mean, they're fine if you're happy to see your car sort of driving. Sort of. So let's see. Right. So this is the kind of evolution that we can expect from our boats. So start totally dumb. So one thing that is very important, that's why I was concentrating on, on performance, is to be able to run these tests as quickly as possible. Um, you, want, you want to run these tests as quickly as possible so you can have as many generations as possible in, in the shortest amount of time. Because this, like this, it will take forever. Um, so we can see, for example, right now we are a generation two and they have a population of 20. And you see that it's got literally nothing, right? Um, let's see at the end of the video when he speed up things. And this is cool, this is cool. It's not fast, as you can see. I mean, if you know about racing, it's not really doing a racing line. So this will never really work for a racing game. It's all right. It's going around the track, but it's not really... This is cool. This is learning how to park. <laughs> Let's see what happened at the end. I saw another one that was exactly the same video where he put like two cars trying to park in the same place and they were fighting each other. It was fun. And, and there are other quite cool example of uh, the, the thing playing Mario. Welcome back, Sethling here. You're watching. Yeah, and this is basically AI. And it's amazing because if I understand this, it's basically starting from a simplified representation of the screen. See, this is the input. That's the input to the to the network, which is amazing. And this is the network, which is super simple. Run it, run it for one minute and then reset the simulation by itself. So let's see if it does it. And of course, it's also generating, yeah. So it's generating f the brains randomly to start with. Then runs this thing for one minute. 
So this is surprisingly clean. I wasn't expecting. I was expecting to be more messy. Boom. Oh. Boom. Great. And then we will restart. Okay. Okay. So that works. That works. And I'm very happy with this. I'm very happy with this. So let's say that I can run 15 boots per thread. And how many thread I have on this computer? Right. How many thread I have on this guy? A lot. One, two, three, four, 16. Okay. So I have 16 thread, but one is used for the graphics. Let's say 15 by 15. So let's say I can run two, un Jesus, <laughs> 225 per minute. That's, that's like a lot. Yeah. That's like a lot. If I can do this, means I can run to 225 genomes per minute. Which is very good. It means in an hour I will be able to evaluate this. So I think I'm going to be fine with performance. And it's going to be very interesting to, to understand what kind of evolution we can see it's 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 not much we only have we only have four boats um let's see let's see the result here so so the first run give us 228 meters It's a boat falling. The second run, 270 meters. <laughs> Camorra documenter, enjoy. <laughs> Your mom closed you? Hmm? This smells so bad. Okay, so of course our performance is worse now. Because the boats are falling. So I wonder how long it's going to take the AI to understand that velocity is important. Because right now, interestingly so let's see if if we can make a sense of what we're seeing so this is a small sample for boats i am seeing a small improvement we are now at 300 meters who knows number of uh, boats that we, we evaluate per time is, is, is constant. What it changes, you know, until I do this multi-thread, which is something that I should do. The hope is that by having a larger population that we can breed a little bit better. I need to implement multi-thread on this. <laughs> it's, so, it's so slow. 
just watching and hoping for a, for an improvement, which actually doesn't happen. Because again, I think we have the waves creating a lot of, the waves are creating a lot of random variations. Well, I don't see a lot of improvements, but I think I don't have, um, or well, since to, definitely I will have to code the multiplayer, I say the multiplayer, the multi-threads part of this to make the test faster, of course, obviously. Uh, but that's not something that I can do quickly. It's going to take me. For now, all I can do is uh, leave this running and... Um, cool. All I can do is leave this running and see if coming back after lunch, if uh, there was an improvement. And uh, anyway, thank you guys for stopping by. Uh, if you see this on YouTube, you can follow it live three times a week on Twitch. It's Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 10 o'clock in the morning, Central European time. So my next uh, stream is going to be next Monday, 10 o'clock in the morning. If you like the idea of this game, please share it on social media. So we can make sure that once this thing becomes a reality, uh, there are as many people as possible uh, playing it. So yeah, see you next Monday with the result of this uh, neural network experiment and we will see how good they will be. So see ya. Have a good weekend. Ciao, ciao.